Grind here. TV YouTube channel. We have an exciting YouTube video for you here. Our oh, beloved Peanut TDA887 is getting a red deflocker and a rigue. Yep. And a front deflocker and rigue also. Right. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, I didn't even know that. But <laughs> this video is going to be real fun. We're going to go through the process of installing the deflock, which is really going to be cool and it's going to be a learning process for me, myself, Salim, Justin really, Justin here, and we have Nick in the background somewhere lingering. Um, wait, what is the first step? We just gonna go through all the parts that we have. So keep tuned in. Season two of the build series starts now. This is bringing back memories. I haven't been here in a while recording in the garage. Peanut was basically parked up. Mm. Not really parked up. But doing no work on it, and we didn't really get to do any footage on it. But we we get a we get a video today for all it. <laughs> So you are probably wondering why would I need to install a diff locker on my 4x4 if I put it in 4 wheel drive all 4 wheels should spin at the same time right? No this is not the case and in order to understand this you need to understand how a differential works. I'm going to try my best to explain this in the easiest way possible where everyone can understand. Your engine and transmission sends power to your drive shaft causing your pinion gear to spin the ring gear inside of your differential. It then sends power to your axle shafts, which then makes your wheels move basically. This works great for driving in a straight line, but your car also needs to turn corners. This is why you have a bunch of spider gears in the center of the diff, which allows your wheels to spin at different speeds. This is a major problem when you're off-roading because power gets sent to the wheel with the least amount of traction. This is why you would see 4x4 is stuck and one wheel is spinning when the other side isn't. Right, so here in front of us we have a Toyota Hilux differential which is from the 2.7 gas model. It is a 4.56 ratio differential which is what we need for our um, 35 inch tires rather than um, the hard to get trailer gear, rear gear kits and stuff like that which is like out of stock for months we end up doing some research and we found out that the gas model local is 4.56 ratio um, we already have the dial indicator um, set up already to check our backlash pre uh, removal and we're going to check the tooth pattern also to make sure when we mount back up we have a similar tooth pattern and, and backlash engagement uh, if you watch you see the differential is mounted on our rig which is an engine stand we, ha we had in the shop and we modified a um, bracket by our dear uh, friend um, Mr. Manush from ICDWF and Welding um, it's a bracket designed by the one and only Mr. David right? <laughs> he actually sponsored the, um, the, 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 the bracket and I'm grateful for him for that so this will help us now to be able to maneuver the differential at different points to be able to work on differential. Right, so to explain this a little better, this is not the differential from Peanut. This is from a 2.7 gas. Every, I know people can get confused by the diff being here, right? This is not the diff from Peanut. This is another diff. It's a donor diff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're gonna put the locker on this diff and then install it on Peanut, basically. Yeah. Which means that Peanut will have a spare diff. Correct. Oh. Right, so what we have here is the delegator mounted magnetically onto the stand. A dial indicator is a precision tool to check minor clearances and um, well in this case backlash. So how we have it is engaged on the tool right now. If you put the um, camera right here, um, Nikolai, you see it is engaged onto the tooth and we carry it to this furthest point and, and, and we check the backlash onto it there. Right? And on the measurement, 
we'll see we get about seven to eight um thousands of an inch movement on the dial indicator so which gives us a, a, about seven to eight inches uh, eight toes of um backlash so i have a question why would we be checking this the crown wheel needs to be engaged with the pinion right if the crown wheel is engaged too tightly or too loosely into the pinion it will cause abnormal wear onto the um the, the, the crown wheel and could cause too too damage it could cause the the differential to bind and um just destroy the differential in in in, in retrospect so that's why we have to check backlash basically check backlash on the gear that we're going to disassemble to see what condition we okay. found it in so this is an as found this is okay. a pre disassembly check yeah okay i'm gonna explain the two pattern engagement with the gear comp the gear marking compound um which is this here okay not regular paint otherwise it will dry up on your fast all right so we're going to take the brush and apply some on both sides of the um the crown wheel and then we're going to turn the, the pinion gear to be able to mark the, the gear pattern and when we finish we will be looking for the contact pattern which is like what we've seen here on the pages and that will give us an initial wear pattern and, and um, gear pattern of the differential currently here right now Alright, so here we have the gear pattern compound mark onto the fourth tooth. Four teeth? Two teeth, same thing. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously we are really um, grateful to have Mr. David with us here because he's been teaching us a lot um, in my offering career, I would say for the past three years. Uh, Mr. David has been a, a stalwart and been guiding me accordingly and I wouldn't have been here honestly if it wasn't for him also. So here we go. See that sharp cutoff line there? That means the pinion is a bit deep. So this is workable, but it's not a great pattern. And that's the as found. Right, so, so when we do, when we put it on, we're going to have to set it up better than that. Alright, so if you watch it here, yeah. you'll see it's closer down to the, the toe side of the arm. If you watch it here, you see it's down to the toe. It's been engaged here mostly, right? Mm -hmm. And if we just turn it upwards, you know, we can try to watch the back side of it. And you will see, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of centered. I, I would say it's kind of centered. Not bad on the drive side. Yeah, it's not bad on the drive side. I, I think that is where, co what, what count, where counts. Mm -hmm. Because that's the pressure. That's the pressure where, where it's taken. So I would generally think that we're in a good starting point. Um, well, we're going to do it better than that. Yeah, we will try to get as best as possible. But remember, we're not we're not removing any pinion right, because we're so not going to change the depth. Yeah, so we're not going to change the pinion depth. So the most we'll do is just tighten up the backlash a little bit right. to try and keep when we tight, tighten the backlash a little bit, we'll be sending the the crown wheel more into the pinion. Yeah. So it should bring it a little centered. So if it is we are at a seven to eight, mm -hmm. and the book calls for five to seven toe of um, backlash, we should set it about six and a half seven. Right. And we should be good. Okay, do Drill the differential carrier because there's an air locker. We need to introduce air into the locker. In doing so, we have to run the lines through a, a coupler one, here, one a way. one quarter, a, a four millimeter line, four millimeter line, I believe it is, and it comes through this spot here into the differential and around the crown wheel onto the the the, the ring that gets air into the locker.
Okay. Wow. So we're slacking in all the bolts for the ring gear because we are only using the ring gear from this from, um, differential carrier to use onto the ARV locker. Right, so here we have the ARV air locker, we have the ring gear, and we have the two side bearings. So what are we going to do? is we're going to install the side bearings onto the differential hose differential carrier then install the ring gear back onto the diff and we're basically finished with the assembling of the carrier Time to install ring gear onto the carrier. However, it's a very snug fit. So what we need to do is to heat, heat the ring gear for it to be able to slip over. And to do so, we will need to put this in um, a tub of water and heat it up to about 100 degrees so. And bring it on quickly and let's slip it onto here. And we're also going to put this in the freezer so this it will, it will, it will shrink. To shrink it a little bit. Yeah. Nice. That's okay. Science. Just to make it easy Don't you to love it? Simple. It's actually what I was talking about, about the thermal coefficient of volumetric expansion. So when it shrinks and the other one expands, it will be an interference fit. Nice. Yeah, let's go watch it. We have this the crown wheel is onto the carrier. Thank you for dinner, yeah, but this was really All <laughs> bolts tighten and torque to 65 foot pounds. So now it's just to finish drill the differential with the 716 drill bit, put in the quarter inch tap, quarter inch NPT tap, and assemble everything up, and we should be good to go. So tap in 101, right? You always go forward a little bit, turn back to clear the treading, and then go forward again. A few turns, and then they come back. That way it doesn't break the, the tap also. So why are you tapping this hole now? Alright, so this hole is where the air is being introduced into the into the um, differential. Right? So our uh, airline is gonna be run into that. Yes. Nice. And that's it there, we're done. Press thread. Right, so this here is a quarter inch NPT um, threaded insert that goes down into the um, into the differential. Right, so you take a spanner, tighten it down. Obviously, we need to use um, a little silicone on the threads to help keep the seal, right? And um, then thereafter, there are more fittings here. You can use this style also. I like the style, Mr. David. What's this one? They come with a threaded arm. Um, A banjo type fitting mm -hmm. that they could come here with and use it like a swivel. Yeah. They give it different options. So here we have this seal housing which carries two Viton square cut seals. And there's a hole here that the copper tubing is allowed air to come in into the into the um, housing, the, the housing, which is then placed over the differential carrier, right? And then this is sent through the bulkhead fitting and routed properly so that the, the, when the differential is spinning it doesn't interfere with the copper line and, and, and burst it otherwise you will um, end up with air being captured into the differential 
Um, and it's simple as that. And then we install our ARV compressor and the, the manifold. And by the flick of the switch. Well, all right, so as mentioned before, we, when we scrap the differential, we check the backlash. So now we are going to redo the backlash. We're going to adjust the backlash to get it back to where it was when you originally took it, took it off. And um, then we're going to check back the, the brown of the differential and the tooth pattern after. And we should be good to go. Hold on, all right, so we had seven tow, dead on. And we're happy with that. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna check the differential run out to make sure the differential is running straight and true. Right now, we are looking for any deviation in the, um, the turning of the, the differential. And so far we're getting like a, a tow, which is nothing. I really like that. Yeah, so that's good. Um, so if you guys check it out here, we have the paint marker, um, the gear marking compound on the crown wheel back again. And if we check to it here, this is the drive side of the crown wheel. And if you watch the pattern, if you scroll back down to the video, you will see, or Kyle could probably put a screenshot on it. The marking is similar to what we took out, right? On the coast side you will see it's nice and centered and that's what we're looking for on the drive side it's getting nice engagement into the meaty part of the crown wheel and that way it you know that it doesn't give the um the humming the howling noise when a differential has too much um backlash and stuff like that so here we are going to install the seal housing tube and if you look closely, you'll see we have oil on the right hand seals. I put a little oil slick here. So now it's just a careful process now into trying to get it over the differential without pinching the seals. It's a nice little wiggle. I've just been locked up. So no get tested at all. Yeah. Yeah. Alright guys, so there you have it. The locker is installed. We have all the side gears, everything adjusted and locked up. We have the seal housing tube installed we routed the, the copper i mean it's not to the best it's my first time doing it so it was a little um, iffy however the the tube is still connected it's not broken um so now we fit we put the fitting in so all we have to do is just to cut the copper tube in install the fittings as we discussed earlier and that's it and install into the into the van we're good to go